Yeah, I post a link uh, to YouTube on Canvas. Sure. All right. Uh, today, I had a question before class started, so I'll address that right at the beginning. Um, and um, we're going to look at other ways to use images besides the obvious one, you know, just putting an image on your page. Um, so let me download the example that we were working on last time. Yeah, it's, that's, that's, that exa that's the exact question that, that I had, how to center an image. Um, All right, so let's let's look at the lion picture, the lion page that we had last time. So we have this. All right, so it might be better to start with a brand new example with no CSS. So I'm going to do that. Uh, generally, it's better to um, resize it in Photoshop. Because if you're resizing it in HTML, um, you are still downloading the larger picture size. So in other words, if you had a, a um, 3,000 by 4,000 pixel image, you're still downloading all them, all the bytes that make up that image. And then you're saying, well, but display it tiny. It'd be better to display it tiny. Now, there, there is, an, a, there is a, a one little exception to that, and that is if you're using like a mobile device and you want to make the image smaller, sometimes you can resize via CSS. But we'll, we'll talk about that when we talk about mobile stuff. I'm going to go, and I'm going to edit this. The question was how to center an image. So I'm going to start out with just one image on the page. We're going to go back like to square one on this. We'll keep that. And here's what our page looks like. All right, because there's no CSS on it. Now, let me sketch to see if I understand what you guys want. All right, because I think that's important to sketch it out. Because depending on exactly what you want, you might want 
um, slightly different things. Here's what I'm thinking that you want. And, well, here's what I'm thinking that you want. I'm thinking that you want the text as it is now with the image centered like that. Is that correct? I have my text like this. Uh -huh. I want to put it there so I need margins, I think. OK. But either one is fine. OK. Well, I'll tell you what. Let's do this a little bit at a time. Yeah. All right. Um, And uh, so let, let me think about this for a minute. Um, OK. Let's actually do all of it in one. Let's do, trying to think what's the best way to approach. So in other words, you want a margin like this with your headline, with your text, and then the image centered like that. OK. So let's do that. Now, for simplicity here, I'm only I'm going to put the CSS right into the HTML, just like we did the first time we covered CSS. That doesn't mean that that's what you should you should do. All right. There we go. That doesn't mean that's what you should do. It's, it's generally better to create your own CSS file, but just for simplicity, I'm going to put everything in the same file. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to go in here, edit with Notepad, make this guy bigger. Put, yeah, put the style tag on here. And style. And I'm going to say do 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 um header with six hundred pixels, let's say, or four hundred pixels. 600 pixels, margin 0px, auto. All right. And let's do this incrementally. So I'll do the same thing for the article. which I think I forgot the end tag for. So we'll go and slide that in. So I go and save this. And now I look at this guy. And we have something like that. All right. Now what we want to do is we want to shove this image over. All right. So we want to center it. Um, I'm going to try a couple of things. And they're not going to work at first, but then we'll make them work. All right? text align center. Before we get into the specifics of this, um, the first thing to ask yourself when you have a problem like this is, am I dealing with a CSS problem or am I dealing with an HTML problem? Remember, CSS or HTML relates to the actual content on the page. A, uh, CSS relates to the appearance and the physical layout. So am I? adding the content to the page by centering this. No. I'm not saying I want a new image or a new paragraph. I'm saying the stuff that I have now, I want to look different. Therefore, the first thing that you would identify is that this is a CSS question and not an HTML question. All right? 
So that's the first thing to identify. All right. Now, when I do this, I'm going to get, I think, most of the way there, but not all the way. I centered the image, but I also centered the text, which I may or may not want. If you want the text centered, fine, you're done. If you don't want the text centered, what do you do? Well, you can do this. Right now, I centered the whole article. I don't want to center the article. I just want to center this guy. So I can wrap this in a container. For example, a div. A div simply means a division of the page, a section of the page. I could also make this a section tag. Let's do that. And then what I would do would be this. And then that's aligned, sorry about that. That's aligned to the um, left, and the image is still centered. Sure. Yeah. Remember, I upload these examples as well. So what I did is I put the image inside another tag. And I, told, I said for that tag, text align center. Text align is a little bit of a misleading name because it doesn't only align the text, it aligns any content that's in that container. Yeah, so um, text align um, will, that will, will uh, align any content that is in the container. So in this case, uh, there's an image in there, so it will align the image in there. All right, that's one way to do it. Here's another way to do it. Again, I'm going to do this in two steps. And the first step is definitely not going to work. The second step should work. How did we center stuff before? We said margin, zero pixel, auto. That doesn't work. All right. Why doesn't it work? It worked when we did that for our header and for our article. Yes. Because the image is the image is nested inside a yeah, inside an article? Uh probably not. Um go ahead. Um, that, that would be a class. That would be, again, that, that would be, I'm assuming that this is the only image on the page, so I'm, I'm just making it image, so, so that wouldn't be the effect. Uh, the reason the margin doesn't work here is because this is a, uh, images are inline tags, not block tags. Margins only work for block tags. So if I lie, or I'm not lying, that, boy, that sounds harsh if I lie. If I use CSS to tell the browser to treat this like a, block tag, I'm guessing this is going to work. And 
it does. So I just said, I put on the image, display block. So I said margin zero, pixels auto, just like I did before. I said display block, though, because uh, margin, there's a certain, there's, there's a few characteristics in CSS that only, only work on block tags, and margin is one of them. So margin being an inline tag, it doesn't work on it. But if you tell the browser to treat it, you know, you can change anything about a page via CSS. You can even tell the browser to treat it like a block tag instead of an inline tag. So if you say you want it to be displayed as a block tag, then voila, the margin works. All right? Now, these are two different ways. In the grand scheme of things, it doesn't matter which you use. All right? I don't really care. If I were going to if I were going to pick one, this method or this method, they both look the same, which one do you think I prefer? The one that adds another HTML tag and styles it, or the one that styles the image without adding another HTML tag. The second one, you're absolutely right. And why is that? Because the first one, I cheated just a tiny bit, and I put in an HTML tag for the sole purpose of putting style on it. So I, I, added, uh, I, I added an HTML tag that didn't really add any content or meaning to the page. And again, you know, it's not like you're going to go to jail for this, all right? It's not like uh, anyone's going to judge you too harshly for this, but the pure 100% all CSS solution is a better way to do it. Yes? Well, the one with the, the extra HTML tag, right? This one has no HTML tag uh, added since the original. This one, we did add an HTML tag, yeah. Well, that's a good question. And again, I wasn't necessarily going to talk about this today, but um, since someone asked, I'll, I'll do it. Um, you know, and, and that's sort of the way that it'll go. Sometimes if you ask a question about CSS beyond what we've talked about in class, you know, I'll, I'll just answer it on the spot because I think it's an interesting question for the whole class. Other times you might be working on something that is uh, distinct to the problem that you're trying to solve, in which case it'll be better to address it in lab. But by all means, bring these questions up in class. Um, from what I understand, a couple people, I got asked this question by two people, so there's a good chance that a bunch of people have this kind of question. So I thought it would be a good one to, to talk about. All righty. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to talk about using images more or less just for decoration. All right? Images are a little tricky because we talk about content versus style, and we talk about adding things versus eight by, through HTML versus adding things through CSS. And for a lot of things, it's pretty clear if it's content or if it's decoration, right? If it's content or if it's style. You know, a paragraph is content, right? A, uh, making it a certain color is style. But what about images? Images can either be content on the page, in other words, important, meaningful content, it's just a picture instead of text, or it can more or less be just for styling purposes, to give your look a certain feel, all right? Or to give your page, a, yeah, a certain feel, or um, to, to help organize the page, or, or things like that. So you can put images on your page both via CSS and via HTML. And it's usually, in my mind, anyhow, clear when you do one versus the other. So let's think of an example. Here's where we left off last time. This is what our page looked like. All right? We actually could put a pattern where this white is, all right, to make it look a little nicer. All right? I'm going to go in Google. I have like a million tabs open. I'm going to close some of these. I'm going to Google 
CSS patterns. And there's a there's a whole galleries and, and of them that you can pick. And we would pick one that we felt matched um, what our content was. I don't particularly like any of these that I'm seeing so far. Maybe honeycomb. We'll go with that one. Oh no, that's complicated. We'll skip that. Never mind. We'll use this. I don't know if it's good or not, but it'll serve the purpose. All right, here's the, 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 the image. It's a PNG file. Now, what I should do is I should look at the terms and conditions of this site. Because maybe it says that I can use these, but I have to give them credit. Or maybe it says I can use these, and I don't even have to give them credit. Let's see what the website says. All patterns on the site can be used free of charge, but please read this before using them. I am free to copy adapt, and so forth. But I got to give credit. All right? So how important is that because I just don't it's, it's important. If you're like for a company. Oh, absolutely for a company. Yeah, because, um, again, uh, read, uh, there, there's a, in, in week one, I think, there was a thing about within an educational context. You have a lot more freedom within an educational context, but if you're doing it in a professional context, you shouldn't take stuff that's copyrighted unless it's, it's licensed under what's called a Creative Commons license, which this is. So I'm going to go, and I'm going to copy, and I'm just going to say where this come from, where this comes from. Um, again, that, I, that my, my thought would be the URL would be the best thing to put on there. Um, that is something that I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not necessarily going to, um, you know, um, I'm not in a position to argue what you absolutely are required to do. It says give attribution, and putting a website out there is attribution. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll do this as I use this. I'll put it in the footer. So, here's the image. I'm going to bring it in my folder. All right. And I'm going to edit the lion page so I can add the footer. I'm going to edit the CSS. Remember, in class, Talk about what is what is correct. Um, you know, the speed limit on a road is 25 miles an hour. Does that mean that everyone goes 25 miles an hour? Probably not. Um, but 
as a teacher, I have to say, you know, to follow copyright law. Because um, strictly speaking, if you don't, even if it's a non-commercial site, even if it's for a non-profit, or if it's for your own personal purposes, using copyright materials is illegal. Will they do anything to you? Probably the worst that they would do is they would tell you to take down the, the, the image. All right? But again, there would be the risk that, that um, you know, it's, it's a violation uh, of, of, the, of the law. And uh, let's see. I'm going to say Brandy Leith made this. So I will say I'll make a link to this page. All right, so now I have the disclaimer down there. If I want to center it, I have to put in the CSS, the same thing. So now I want to go and add the background image. So I'm going to go in the body, and instead of saying background white, I'm going to say background URL, and then in parentheses, and in quotes inside those parentheses, I'm going to put the name of the image. And the name of the image is vintage-concrete-png. Now I save that and go and look, and I have that on the background. By default, it tiles it. So in other words, if we look at this image, if we open up this image in paint, image is that big. So what it will do is it will tile it. You can tell it not to tile it through CSS also. If you only wanted it going down the side of the page or whatever. So that's a pretty popular thing to do is to have sort of a background image that's sort of like wallpaper, you know, a tile in the background and have your code sitting on top of it. All right. We could also use more like a regular image if we wanted to. All right. So let me find a big picture of a lion. Actually, let's see how big my lion pictures were. Oh, no, I resized them. Never mind. Let's go out and find a big picture of a lion. All right. Um, I'm going to go to, say, I want big. And I'm going to say usage rights. All right. 
So these are ones that I'm allowed to use um, according to their licensing. I s labeled for reuse. I, I would still put the URL, yeah. So I'm going to view the image. I'm going to save this image. Um, j just leave it the way it is. All right. And where did I get that from? From wikimedia.org. It actually is a good idea to put the date retrieved. Even if you're doing a term paper um, and you use something from a website, it's good to uh, put the date retrieved on it. The reason for that is, what if someone went to look it up and it was no longer there because they changed the page? Well, you can say, well, on September 20th it was. There's actually tools that you can use to sometimes find out whether, uh, to, to find the way the page looked on that date. So I'm going to put 9-20-2017. I'll leave a credit for both of these in, even though I'm only going to use one of them. I'm also going to simplify the name of this to just lion. And I'll go into the CSS and say background lion.jpg. Now when I do this, unfortunately, kind of the line's a little bit obscured. All right. Pardon me? I like the graph. Yeah, it is good. Oh, well, that might be okay. Oh, uh, we can do a few things about this. Um, it might help us to resize this image a little bit to make it just a teensy bit smaller. So I'm going to do that. And it's on the web, so I'm not going to worry about a backup for it. lifts it up a little bit. Um, problem is, is that background color gets in the way. So I could get rid of the background color. Now we see the lion sort of peeking uh, under there. Just for uh, this example, I'm going to save another version of this. I'm going to get rid of the lion images. Just to show you what I mean.
wow, that looks good. What's the problem with it? Can't read it, <laughs> right? So always remember that it's great to have your pages look good, but usability is also a thing. So what could we do to fix that? All right, all right there's a couple things we could do, we'll, we'll, and we'll do them in order, all right? Um, I'll probably end up making a couple versions of this as well. One thing that we could do is we could pick a text, we could try to pick a text color that would look good up against the line image. That's going to be difficult to do because notice that the grass is light but portions of the line are dark. So if we picked white, that might show up good up against the dark parts of the lion, but it wouldn't show up good against the grass and vice versa. One thing we can do is we could actually go and we could fade the image using a tool to make it look sort of like a watermark. All right. Uh, so I'm going to go and do that. I'm also going to put no repeat on here because if you notice, the image is repeating again. So I'm going to go and go into an editor. Now this is, um, this is something I'm not sure that um, Paint provides, but there is a tool called GIMP that does. And this may take a while. To, pardon me? Yeah, it is, it is great. Tell you what, while this is thinking about it, we'll do the other approach, and that would be to make, it make a transparent background. So how do we make something transparent? We can go and we can Google. Image opacity. Okay, that's kind of what we want. I'm not going to do it with an image, but I'm going to do it with I could put this snippet of code on all of the places I have text. Give it a white background, but make it make the opacity 50%. 50% means it's 50% see-through. The higher the number, the more solid it is, the less see-through it is. All right, that sort of has the best of both worlds. Now, this is not visible against that, but I could easily change that by making the background of my H1 or making the text of my H1 black. So, what's good about this is you can still see the image, but you sort of have these see-through things uh, sitting on top of the image that you can uh, read the text on that allows you to read the text. So that would be one approach that you can take. All right?
Again, I'm going to save another copy of these. I'm going to get rid of this stuff, stuff I just put in. And now that the GIMP has fired up, I can go in here and I can play with the colors of this, the brightness and the contrast. Usually turning the contrast down sort of fades the image and turning the brightness up will sort of give me a watermark effect. So if I can pick the right balance of those, I can get the right sort of faded image that I want. Let's go with that. I'm going to go up here and file export as. I'm going to change it to Lion 2. Export. Export. All right, saved it. I can now go into my CSS for style 2 and say the URL is lion2. Make sure everything is saved. And then I can bring up lion3. And I have the faded image with the text on top of that. And that's also a good combination of making it readable versus making it um, aesthetically pleasing. All right. Because um, remember, um, you, want, um, you want your pages to look good, but you also want your pages to be usable. So things like being able to read the text is a pretty important key to the usability of the page. All right. So as lovely as this picture of a lion is, um, we don't necessarily want to use it for a background if it's going to make the, the page unreadable. So there's a couple of things we can do. We can set, uh, the first thing that we did is we set a, um, we set a semi-transparent background and let that sit on top of it. The other thing that we did is we actually faded the image out. Now sometimes you can luck out and if, if the, if the, if the, image is primarily a very light image or a very dark image, you can luck out and maybe find a font that works without you having to do either of those things, uh, a color of the font. So like if I had a picture of uh, a, a forest, you know, that, that had all, you know, darker shades of green and brown and things like that and not a lot of like white areas, maybe I could use a light font and it would show up nice. Or conversely, if I had a scene of a beach with uh, the, 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 the tan sand and the, the blue water and the blue sky, um, I could use maybe a very dark font and that would show up nice. So that's a possibility as well. Now, I, I've been doing this just for the body. We can do this for uh, any part of the page. All right. So I'm going to go and I'm going to save yet another copy of this. I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, you just say no repeat. Yeah.
I'm not going to go to the trouble of finding another image, but I could put that same lion image as a background of the H1. I could. And again, notice really what I see um, is just that background image, that portion of the background image that fits underneath the H1. I'm going to go and save this instead, the original image. All right, that looks a little nicer, the graph. So I could put a background over only a section of the page if I want. And um, that can be that could be useful as well. Repeat, what was the question? Uh, I, I just picked a different image. Yeah, the, the Lion 2 image was the faded version of the image, and the Lion, just Lion JPEG was the original version of the image, and therefore I just changed it from Lion 2 to Lion. I, I put that CSS in the H1. So I can do a background image, not just on the entire page, but I could do it on uh, sections of the page as well. Now, I think in Spider-Man they say, with great power comes great responsibility, right? That's Spider-Man, right? Yeah. All right, good, good, good. I, say, I can't believe that I would have a, a CISS class that didn't, someone didn't know a, some comic reference, right? Um, we can literally, now on everything on the page, we can change its color, the color of the text, the color of the background, and we can even put an image in the background. We can make, we're at the point now where we can make some truly ugly pages if we're not careful, all right? Our next step is to talk about, well, we don't want to make truly ugly pages. We want to make good pages, all right? So our next step will be to talk about design. We now have all these technical tools in our toolbox, how to do all these different things. And there's more to come. So we'll, our powers will only get better and bigger. What we want to talk about now is the judgment to know when to use these tools, all right, and, uh, and, and how to use them in an effective way. If you have not already, before next week, read about the project, because we'll talk a little bit about design and we'll probably start talking about the project sometime next week. All right, uh, that's all I had. We'll see you up in lab.